So um, if you've just listened to episode two and you've heard about this crazy escape, one of the things you're hearing about is a, a real effort to reform the prison system. Yes. Um, are there efforts like that still today? Uh, is the prison system, where? Do you, how do you calibrate a prison system to treat prisoners civilly, mm-hmm. respectfully, but also it's punitive? Mm-hmm. And there is some, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, rehabilitation. rehabilitation. Rehabilitation that's supposed to happen there. Tell me about what, what you what you've encountered with well, that. You know, the prison system, of course, I've been inside, um, not as an inmate, but uh, I visited, uh, pri- you know, prisons. Um, I've toured federal prisons, um, you know, Rikers I've, I've toured. Um, it's really, it's broken. The system is broken. Um, it's supposed to be punitive. You're in there for a reason. There should be some rehabilitation as well because people that are not going to be there um, forever need to be reintroduced into society with some sort of skill set so that they don't reoffend. And if they need treatment, I think that they should get it. Um, perhaps they should get education so that, again, when they come out, they can be uh, productive members of our society. A lot of that does not happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is really, really, it should be troubling to, to everyone because the rate of recidivism is I'm not exactly sure of the rate because it changes depending on what the crime is, but the rates are really astronomical. And I think in large part because of the way our system is run. And right. there's just sort of this industrial complex now. It's just, and we're, we're bringing kids in really young. It's almost like a pipeline from schools to prisons. And, and it, it affects disproportionately communities of color. And um, that is, um, it, it just distresses me <laughs> yeah. to just think about it. It's um, interesting because one of the things that we found going back through all the material from that time was that Phil Donahue, mm. uh, talk show legend, yeah. had actually gone to the Ohio State Penitentiary when Lester was there. Really? He was there in 1972, mm. and he did a, an entire week of programming on abuse and mistreatment of prisoners. Yeah. And it's hard to get that mindset when you hear about how Lester was yeah. let out. What did you think when you heard about this program that sent him into the community unmonitored? I, I really couldn't believe it. Um, I know that there are um, some programs for low-level offenders, but you don't have someone that raped and murdered a 14-year-old on release into the community unaccompanied. I mean, right. I, I've never heard of that kind of inmate qualify for that kind of program. I I think uh, rape, murder, uh, assault, anything like that, I, I just don't understand how that would um, qualify. Right, right. So that, that was shocking to me. In fact, I was talking to, you know, my husband and some friends about this, and the question that kept on coming back was, but how... Did he qualify for that, especially right. someone on death row? Because they have nothing to lose. Right. Why exactly. would they come back? Right. And Why? In, and in and in Lester's case, his sentence had been commuted, but it was still life in prison yeah. without the possibility of parole. Why? Why? Why would they come back? Right. It doesn't make sense. Lester's escape sort of went unnoticed, and some of the people we talked to felt that if his victim had been white, that there may have been a bigger public outcry and response. And I'm curious if you think that that may factor in to why he escaped in pretty much silence. Oh, I, th- I think there's no question about that. It's, it's unfortunate. Um, but y- you look at the media coverage even today um, of missing victims, you know, amber alerts, anything like that. Typically, um, those that involve a victim of color are much less likely to be reported on. Um, it, it just it it happens even today, mm-hmm. and we've gotten better. There's no question in my mind that had it been um, a, a little white girl, that um, it would have been front page news. Listen for free now on Apple Podcasts.